In this video, I'm going to answer a follow-up question from our friend Mosin. Mosin previously asked me about how to create a learning style assessment. Uh, like before, when I made the video for that, which you can watch if you click right here, um, we're not going to address the merits of learning styles or, or not in this video. Here we're just talking about the technical requirements of what Mosin was looking for. So in this case he's asking, can we show a countdown timer in each slide in Adobe Captivate? So let's do that right now. So here I have the Adobe Captivate file associated with that personality trait assessment. Uh, in this case, like I said, it was for learning styles, but you could use this for any number of different types of assessments where you're trying to capture someone's uh, preferences or their personality types. Um, so in this case here, uh, all of the A answers, all of the B answers, and all of the C answers each contributes to its own variable and the result is displayed for you at the very end of the project using uh, you know the variables actually within a text box here. So um, what what Mosin is looking to do is to put a time limit on someone completing this assessment. And there's actually two ways in Adobe Captivate. Um, this is version 8, so of course that may change over time, but uh, with version 8 you've got two different learning interactions that are available to you that you can add to any of your Adobe Captivate projects. Incidentally, this is a responsive design project and uh, no problem, you can actually add those uh, interactions to uh, a responsive design project as well. To access them, click on the Interactions drop-down icon and that will bring you to this little drop-down menu and you can select Learning Interactions, which is the very last item. And that's going to bring up the selection or the select interaction uh, window. And if we scroll down a little bit, there's actually two that are available for you. There's a timer and then there's an hourglass. We'll do the timer first so we can see what that looks like. And then I'll show you the hourglass. So if you click on timer and then simply click on the insert button, that's going to insert the timer uh, onto this page here and open up the configure interaction window. There are some instructions here that you can read through, but the long and the short of it is is that you can choose to uh, adjust a few things, like you can change the text color. Let's make that a dark color. The background color, maybe we'll choose something more matching with this particular template here and uh, background. We can have no background if you wish. Let's make the time to complete this to be one minute. And the minimum that you can do is one second, but we'll just set it for one minute. We can choose to either count down or count up, whatever you prefer or whatever you think is more natural for your particular application. You can restrict the timer to just your project's quiz. Now, I actually don't have a quiz in this particular project. All of these uh, buttons, these, this assessment that I've created, uh, is done with my own interaction. So Captivate doesn't recognize this as a quiz, so I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. I can store this information in a variable. Uh, we'll just call it timer1 and uh, you can then choose two final options here. The slide that you're going to jump to, I'm going to use my last slide in the event that the timer finishes before the user finishes, and then a message to display. And we'll just say, time's up. So we'll click on OK, and that will create the widget that you can see here. Now, of course, I don't really want it to be in the middle of my page here. I'm just going to resize this so that it fits within the 
area at the bottom of my page here. Now one other thing that you're going to need to do for this to be effective, you need to have it display for the rest of the project. That way, of course, uh, once I move past slide one, uh, it'll still be running. So let's test that out, and we'll just see how that works. Uh, just give this a moment to generate the project. So here's the countdown. It's going. It's working as you would expect. And of course I can proceed and uh, keep answering these questions. Hopefully I get them done before the timer runs out. Uh, but like I said before, what will happen when the timer runs out is that it will jump down to the final slide. I'll still see the results of my assessment but of course it'll be incomplete. It won't show um, all the remaining questions that I didn't get a chance to answer. Uh, let's just click a few more and we'll see if we can have this time out on us here and see what it looks like. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Time's up. So now it takes me to my final slide. And that is pretty much what I would expect to have happen. Just resize that because that's the way I would want that to appear. But yeah, so that's... Um, pretty straightforward. If I want to delete that now I have to return to the page where it was inserted even though it appears on the subsequent slides. We're going to uh, delete that and just quickly show you the other version of it. So we'll go on to the interactions drop down icon, select learning interactions and uh, we'll just scroll down until we see the hourglass option and insert that onto your page. Pretty much the same controls as before. Let's just do a real short one here, 10 seconds. Uh, we'll put this in a variable called timer2. We'll jump to slide 13 and we'll have the same message before. Times, oops, times up. Click on OK. This creates the widget for you on the page. And I'm just going to resize this so that it's in the bottom right hand corner and not interfering with anything else. Just hold down my shift key if I don't want it to distort too much. And again, we need to make sure that it displays for the rest of the project. And we'll give that a try. We'll see how that previews here. So we'll preview this project and see what the results using the hourglass is. So there it is, counting down 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, time's up and it jumps down here and it says my primary learning style is blank and I selected zero questions for visual, auditory, and kinetic. So, pretty much what you would expect. Um, I personally, uh, just a quick note on this, I think that um, having a, a time limit is a useful tool if you're trying to duplicate real life. In other words, when an employee, for example, is performing a task as they would in real life, if there's a time restriction on them performing that task, then you should put the time restriction in the assessment of their skills and abilities uh, in the e-learning course. Um, if there is no time limit in real life, you just want to make it challenging it's probably not a good enough reason to put a timer on an assessment. But that's just my two cents as well.
Guys, if you like the videos I'm producing, I encourage you to, to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.